Hey everybody, <clears throat> wow, so TikTok allows me to go live again. So I wonder, I wonder if this works, am I gonna get viewers or not? Good connection. Yeah. So this is the first time since I was banned <laughs> that I can be back on this app. So I was just uh, wondering if people are gonna find me at all, is it gonna take me like two minutes or so before people find me again. And of course, I only have a thousand viewers now. So, I mean, I only have a thousand followers now, so I don't know if anybody is going to show up. Usually on my old account, I would get like, I would get, uh, I don't know, a thousand. No, <laughs> usually on my old account, before I was banned, I used to get like, 30 to anywhere between 20 to 100 viewers, sometimes 200. Uh, let's see, I do see some people joining me here on the live stream. So hi, this is my first time since I got banned from TikTok that I can go live again, as it took me only a week to get to a thousand followers again so I can go live. So if you have any questions, I thought I might wanna talk about the coming age of Aquarius. I hadn't heard anything about this yet. I never even knew that we register our timelines in ages like that. Uh, so apparently we're exiting the age of Pisces fish and we're going into the age of Aquarius where people, uh, oh, someone sent me a comment, really? Three viewers, yeah, I just got started after I was banned. So uh, it usually takes some time to build up. And so the age of Aquarius, I got six viewers now. So the age of Aquarius is uh, happy Easter, yeah. <laughs> Who's gonna hunt for Easter eggs? Uh, we are going to move, he has risen, exactly. So you know why I like the story of Christ so much? It's about overcoming the fear of death, overcoming, um, you know, what you call it? Overcoming uh, ridicule as well. I mean. The word death implies ridicule. Yeah, like Heidegger said, it implies being ridiculed, being hated, being whatever. And so you overcome all that and do what is right anyway. Be your authentic self. Oh, I'm just talking about Jesus. So it means to be your authentic self regardless of how people respond to you, how people treat you and so on, right? And then to overcome this is how you resurrect as a new being, as a new person, basically. Yeah. So, yeah, happy Easter. So, uh, oh, hold on. Does it matter who came up with the story? The point is that the story itself is so powerful that we Europeans better live by it. We should live by this, you know, face all your fears, face all the bad people, all the negativity, do what is right and live your authentic self. And that is exactly uh, what this other woman was talking about. There's a woman called uh, Daria on the internet, on TikTok. Daria, um, she spoke at length in her uh, live show last Friday about the coming age of Aquarius, which means we are going to overcome materialism. We're going to do away with uh, the material world. And I myself have been speaking about this many, many times. Uh, why do I care about Muhammad? Why do you even bring that up, man? Come on, come on, be sane, right? So we need to start talking about the things that support us and benefit us and heal us and make us stronger. And one way to do that is to start speaking the truth. This is why they hate freedom of speech after all. They will allow you to participate in any kind of sexual activity, but they won't allow you to have an opinion about it, right? That's weird, isn't it? The crackdown on free speech is meant, I think, to keep us trapped into in old ways that are not beneficial to us, that are harmful to us. And so we, we break out of that. That's the age of Aquarius. We break out of the hierarchical systems of the gender queer fascism, for example. We break out of, you know, uh, the, the, the speech codes. We start saying what we really believe, what is true, what is healthy for us, right? And so we we rise up in a, in a way, right? Bowden did a great speech on Heidegger. I'm going to watch that one because uh, 
Heidegger himself also did some speeches. You can find them on YouTube. Um, they're a bit technical and in German, but um, Heidegger in general also speaks about us facing Third World War. And Heidegger said he was not afraid of the atom bomb, right? He was not afraid of the atom bomb. He was afraid of uh, people no longer thinking for themselves. Uh, Jesus Christ was blonde haired and blue eyes. The Bible says so. And he definitely wasn't black because black means sub-Saharan and that's impossible. Christ was probably a Semitic, a Semitic figure from Northeast Africa and they are not black people. So why do people think that? This is so weird, you know? <laughs> I'm going to block these ones, these nutcases, man. Get lost. All right, here we go. People are so freaking weird, you know? Uh, you can Google it, you know? He had eyes like the fire of a candle, and they mean the blue part of the candle, of course. Don't show the pine. I'm much more interested in um, how the, uh, the Vedas, the Indic Vedas, describe the Aryan arrivals. So there's a group of people, Bronze Age pastoralists, who obviously came to Europe and mingled here with the Europeans, the Indo-Europeans they call them, but they're, that's not the right word for it because it suggests as though they came from India, but they, were, they didn't come from India. They came from what is now Southern Russia between the Black Sea and the Caspian Sea. And so, but the Indi peop Indian peoples and their Hindu language, of course, they got that language from these same Bronze Age specialists that went to Europe, other, another group went to uh, India. And there's a, a study on the Arctic home in the, in the Indic Vedas, they describe the, the Indo-European people, these Bronze Age specialists, as coming from the Arctic regions. And this has been dismissed, of course, because nobody wants to believe that our ancestors, white people's ancestors or our recent ancestors, came from Arctic or sub-Arctic regions. But, you know, they describe uh, people behaving in a certain way as though they were actually living in darkness for three months or so, or six months, no, six months, half a year. And there's only one place on earth where you have, uh, or maybe two places but on earth where you have six months of sunlight and then six months of darkness, the North Pole and the, and, uh, and the South Pole, of course, but people didn't go there. You couldn't reach it on foot um, because this, the South Pole is surrounded by water. The North Pole, you can kind of get there you can get close to it at least. You can get within the Arctic Circle in northern Sweden, for example. I went hiking in Lapland once, and uh, in Lapland, they, uh, you can get to, you're in the Arctic Circle basically. So I saw the sun circle around me without dipping, and that was interesting to see. It didn't go, it was no sunset and no sunrise. It just circled around me for a whole day as I was uh, relaxing in my tent there. Swedish Lapland. You can go to uh, the Kingsleden, the Kungsleden Trail, the King's Trail. Kungsleden means King's Trail in uh, Swedish Lapland. And there you have, uh, in the summertime, it's really nice and doable, you know. Uh, I'm just trying out the live because uh, I was banned from TikTok and I couldn't go live anymore. So I'm just trying to go live now, see how it goes, catching up old habits. I always try to make some effort to uh, keep things going, right? Apparently you do need more followers to have more people on your life, or maybe I should promote it better. Next time I'll just promote it. But it's, of course, it's afternoon now. Uh, normally I would do the live around 8 p.m. On a, on a weekday. I've never heard any speeches by Balden, but I'm gonna look up the one by where you say he spoke about Heidegger. But Heidegger, by the way, has massively influenced leftism, for example, where do you think the idea of cultural relativism comes from? It comes also from Heidegger. So Heidegger influenced um, these intellectuals, I forgot their names, French intellectuals, Sartre, or whoever, I think those were the ones, and uh, some other high IQ people. These high IQ leftists, yeah, they come up with like cultural relativism, it comes from Heidegger because Heidegger says, well, there is no real reality, it's all perception and all imagination. So perceived imaginations and imagined perception, so to speak. And so that's why the, the leftists, the cultural leftists, they say things like, everybody's equal. 
or all cultures are equal. What they really should say is that all cultures are, have no value. All cultures have no value. Each culture is value free, basically. And that doesn't mean they're equal because the word equal refers to a sort of standard that requires evaluation. So you can't say people are equal because then you are valuing them. You should actually say people are, are value free. They have no value, no monetary value, for example. And so one individual is who he is and one another individual is who, is who she is. And you can't compare each other. Imagine comparing women to men. Then what you are doing is you are limiting women's potential to that of men and men's potential to that of women, which is impossible because men aren't women. At least not in my world. Israel is not white. Israel is a Jewish country full of Jewish people and lots of Arabs too. They also live there. Rene Ganon, okay. I used to read books like that. I, I think I must have read one book by Rene Ganon as well, but I, this is like this hard intellectual stuff that is easy to forget when you, after you're reading it. No, that's not true. How can you be on the same side with liberals? The liberals want to use your mass immigration to destroy my people in our own country, so you're not on my side. I'm not a value conservative. Like, oh, if people just share my values, I don't mind that they rape my people or replace my people. No. Values are only there to support the blood of your people. So there's three phases here. You've got, you can say, I want to, I want my people to thrive. And therefore I have these values that support my people. That's blood conservatism. And then you have value conservatism that says, oh, I still like the values we have for ethical reasons or whatever, moral reasons. I just don't care about my people anymore. That's value conservatism. Basically that's treason. And then you can go even one step further and says like, oh, well, you know, I don't even, I just say I care about the values, even though I don't even care about the values anymore. And that's liberalism, right? So. Yeah, well, then you should leave Europe. Are you in Europe? You should leave Europe. I notice I'm somebody who is very motivated uh, internally. I have lots, lots of strong internal motivations. Speaking, for example, I don't speak all day, just for an hour, right? Like this. Uh, I make my videos for TikTok. I always have some thoughts about the world. And then what people do is a lot of people are have external motivations. Basically, they look more, they care more about appearances. And I don't. <laughs> for example, a leader, in my view, is someone who has a vision for the future and is able to communicate it and convince people to support him. That's a leader. But then they say, look at a mirror as though they think I'm not pretty enough to be a leader. But leaders don't have to be pretty. Leaders need to have a vision and they need to be able to communicate it. Another example, someone today said that I look like Lindsey Graham. And I said, well, so someone, someone they, they, they put it this way. They said, oh, you look very, you are very similar to Lindsey Graham, but they meant appearance wise. So I'm thinking, huh? But my values, my beliefs are very different from that of Lindsey Graham, the American politician. What do you mean? Oh, they meant that I look like him. <laughs> Who cares that I look a bit like Lindsey Graham, you know? My views are totally different. And then I noticed that this is why Southern people, and I mean, you know, equatorial people, why they flare up when you compare them to someone. Say, hey, you look like Barack Obama or something. Hey, you look like Eddie Murphy. And they go like, you know, I'm gonna kill you, I'm gonna kill you. you know, they get really aggressive right away because you mean to say, in their view, you mean to say that they are like them. But to me, appearance is appearance and values are values. Those two are very different things, you know? So you can say I look like Lindsey Graham, and it doesn't bother me because my values are completely different and I know what my values are, you know? I don't want to talk about this shit, man. See, this is the problem. I am still in the phase where I'm talking to my own people about what is healthy and good for ourselves and we need to have this conversation for the next 10 years or so, 20 years or so. We need to start figuring out what do we need for ourselves? What's best for ourselves? So I'm absolutely uninterested in all those weird people trying to convince me that Islam is better than Christianity. I'm first going to talk about what is right and best for us, you know?
do you think China will import migrants due to their birth rate crisis? I think China is going to use the American population as their servants, but in America. So China is going to move factories to the U.S. So they won't need migrants because the U.S. will become the United States people is importing Mexicans. And those Mexicans are going to work for the factories that owned by China. So China doesn't need migrants because they're simply outsourcing immigration to the U.S. Have you ever thought of that? The Chinese are just much much, much smarter about this. Imagine that we Europeans did something like that, that we would somehow, I don't know, uh, we, imagine Europeans would support mass immigration uh, to East Asia, and then we move our factories there to have cheap labor, so we don't need immigrants at home. Well, the Chinese are like that, they are that smart. They're just way smarter than us, you know? Yeah, morning stream or so. <laughs> it's 1 p.m. over here, almost 1 p.m. Uh, Iran, is, you know, why do you even talk about Iran taking the Middle East? You know, who cares, you know? I don't sit here saying like Germany is going to take France. <laughs> what the fuck, you know? Who cares, you know? Uh, Celts were the ancient Egyptians. I thought ancient Egyptians were Semitic Northeast Africans. They may have been pale skinned, but largely... Uh, they would have been uh, Semitic. Although, of course, Semitic North Africans are most related to West, Af uh, West Europeans. So I think that's the point, you know. We will never accept the West either because the West today is that queer matriarchal nonsense. We don't want it either. So I hope you understand that what I'm doing is I'm trying to completely rework what we stand for in Europe, you know. So it's going to be an amalgamation of several good principles that we bring back together into a new Europe. The Europe of the future is going to be like a moral Sparta or a Christian Sparta, where we make the man manly, manly, the men manly again, right? So they can fight again, but not for capitalism. We're going to fight for God again. So for spiritual life, you know, it's going to be very different. <laughs> No, I don't trust Putin. Putin is a Eurasianist. He wants to conquer Europe if he can and then submit us to that nonsense. But the other, the other side, the Americans, they want to make our kids transgender and so on. So that's why I used to be for the US until they started with that LGBT crap. And now forget about it. You know, these people are nuts. We're not, I'm not interfering in the Middle East. Why do you say that? You know? It's the U.S. and Israel doing that, but do you think people like me have anything to do with it? No, we have nothing to do with it. You know, I don't support this nonsense in the Middle East. It's a distraction because now, see what happens now. Now we're talking about Gaza has thirty thousand dead, but Ukraine has half a million dead. But we don't talk about them because they're our our people. They look white and blonde and blue eyed, so we don't talk about the Ukrainians, even though half a million of them died. You know. It's unacceptable. This war, this stupid war in, in Ukraine needs to end very quickly because we need our men. June 2 is all about mass migrating sand people into Europe. It's got no, no such themes in it. They paint it as bad. You know? I was surprised how people see things so completely the opposite way that I see it. But then again, you know, I just see it right, you know. At the start of this live show, I had three followers and someone, I mean, the first comment was someone ridiculing me for the fact that I only have three viewers. Now I have 30 viewers, see? So that's how it goes. If, you, if I would allow external validations to harm me at all or, or touch me at all, I would not succeed in anything that I do because everywhere I go, every time I try to be creative with words or music or so on, you know, there will always be people uh, hollering at me, being nasty, you know, being mean. And if I would listen to that, I would not be able to succeed. So I don't listen to it and I succeed anyway. Usually patience wins. You win with patience. That's what we're going to do with Europe. We're going to win with patience, you know. What do you think will come of the U.S. elections? The U.S. elections, I think they're going to bankrupt Trump or shoot him or something, assassinate him. And then you're going to get Michelle Obama or so or someone like that or uh, maybe they're actually going to put Kamala Harris in the White House, you know, 
you know, they're clearly not selecting people for wit and cleverness. They're selecting them for, you know, being uh, obedient to the billionaire class. Because, you know, the United States, who really rules the USA? It's these hundred year old billionaires, absolutely stupid people who have no idea what's going on in the world. No, Kennedy is also a controlled opposition. Around. They're all the same. <laughs> Why would you ask me if I'm pro North Korea? Who cares? Who cares about North Korea at this point? It's just a, a client state of China. That's all it is, you know? Yeah. Lord of the Rings is not really what you think it is. It was written, co-authored co by the CIA, right? They co-authored it in order to rewrite European mythology into something more diverse, something for diversity and migration. Right? It's not what you think it is. The, the actual Germanic mythology is very different. It's all, it's all about uh, fighting for your kin and killing the enemies. And in, in Lord of the Rings, the only homogenous people are the orcs and everybody hates them because they represent Germany, right? Also, Lord of the Rings was written, written from the British perspective against the Germanic perspective. So it's not what you want, you know? Yeah, that doesn't matter. The British National Front, yeah, see? Because they were against Germany. Tom Metzger, no, never heard of him. Yeah, where have you been? Yeah, I was taken down. Uh, I had 50,000 followers and then they uh, fragged all my accounts. I got a device ban. So you have to do a, a factory reset on your phone in order to get back. But this is another phone I, I have a spare phone. I, I, I am no longer using TikTok on my main phone, which is good because I leave the this, this second phone, I leave it at home. So I it will cure my addiction because I was watching watching too many TikTok videos. So this way, uh, this way, at least when I'm out and about, I, uh, <laughs> yeah, typical, but at the same time, it doesn't really matter because my videos get about the same views now around 10,000 views on average. So it's about the same thing as, uh, yeah, device, ban, hardware ban. Exactly. <laughs> they read your idea, your device ID. Uh, no, the orcs represent Germans, just like the uh, Harkonnen. Harkonnen in June also represent the Germans. These, these, these stories, these books were written from the British perspective and they always hate the Germans. You know? <clears throat> uh, I'm not on creator beta, I'm just on regular. You know, Hamas is supported by China and Iran anyway, so. It's, it's also, all these things are proxy wars. Ukraine is a proxy war between Russia and the US. Um, and then you have um, Gaza as a proxy war between China and the US, uh, and so on and so forth, you know? Yeah, yeah. I don't support Israeli influence in the West, but the problem with Western people is that very few of our own people are good at thinking. And that's something you have to admit. The Jews are good at thinking. They have maybe collectively, but then, uh, our Germanic and Celtic white people, why don't we rule our own nations? Why not? Because we, we are too kind, because we're not as ruthless, because we're not as psychopathic, all right? Well, I certainly don't have a lack of knowledge. The, the idea here is that um, the Jews operate as a group and they actually, when they call us racist, it's because they're projecting. Now, I don't want to talk about these things because it's a waste of time. We're never going to do anything with Islam. So just keep it to yourself, you know. Thank you very much. We don't get weapons from China. Yeah, China does support them, so. That's it, they killed our intelligentsia. I think what really happened is this. Uh, up until the late, late 1900, uh, meaning late 1800s, like late 19th century, we still had our own Germanic elites and Celtic elites. But then, see, Europe, Northern Europe, very late in history began to urbanize. In the 18th century, 19th century began to urbanize, 20th century. And then the balance of power shifted from the rural countryside where our elites used to live to the cities. And in the cities, all of a sudden, you have democracy. You know what democracy really means? Democracy means 
that urban majorities will always win every election. Always. Imagine in the United States you have two parties, an urban Republican Party and an urban Democrat Party. There is no one out there who represents you know, the free range humans outside of the cities. That's the whole point, you know? I'll block you anyway, because you have to be respectful towards me. I'm not here to be abused. Uh, we're talking about the coming age of Aquarius, you know, about how materialism is coming to an end. <clears throat> uh, hold on. I'm not here to be abused. You have to be kind. The small intelligentsia that we now have is in prison. Do you think so? I think we do have our smart people, but they're, they're just distracted with other things or so. Take someone like Elon Musk, you know, he's over-focused on technology, trying to achieve some kind of future with technology, but I am doubtful if that is even going to work, right? I don't, I don't believe, uh, yeah, Keith Woods, I don't believe that we, uh, can go to Mars anyway. How can we go to Mars if we don't even feel confident today? Our people, white people, we don't feel confident. We have low self-esteem. We are accused of everything. This shouldn't be allowed. We should be strong and dominant. Not to dominate the world, but to be dominant, meaning that other people cannot suppress us. Other people will not be able to submit us. We don't have to bow to anybody, right? That's the whole point. What do you think should happen to the world? I think Morgoth review. Yeah, I watched that one too. I like that one, Morgoth. What should happen to the world? Uh, Europeans should become confident and dominant enough to simply say who we are. This is who we are. This is what's best for us. And we're going to uh, safeguard or get those things for ourselves. We're going to defend ourselves, basically. We are going to cut loose from the world a little bit. I think that's very healthy for us, you know? Yeah, be independent, but you know, as long as you understand that independence means you can still do business with other people, you just won't allow them to tell you what to do. Doesn't it's independent doesn't mean alone. You can be independent with friends. It's just that when your friends do something you don't want to do, then you don't go along with it. But then they're still your friends tomorrow, you know. So what do you think about the money laundering war in Ukraine? Well, it needs to end very quickly because we are killing so many people there. That really upsets me that we don't really talk about how many men are dying there in eastern Ukraine and we're pretending as though we don't matter, as though we are, you know, cannon fodder. We're not cannon fodder. We are human beings. We deserve to exist here because every man who dies in eastern Ukraine is going to be replaced by an immigrant. You know, you know, that. you know, that's how it is. It's just pure evil. Mass immigration, I think, is the biggest mistake the West ever made. It's an insane policy. It's com the people doing this are severely mentally ill. Yeah, nobody believes that the Islamic Republic stands for peace. And you, maybe, maybe you need to ask yourself why. Why don't people believe that? Huh? Well, I'm here now. Ride the tiger. Okay, someone has read a lot of good books. <laughs> My camera is not off. I'm right here. It's maybe your internet connection. Are you trying to are you trying to troll me? It's your, it's your problem, not mine. Which country is the best country? Mm, I don't believe in things like that. I believe in territory. Uh I think the best place for white people to live is where the birch trees grow. That would be uh, Northern Hemisphere, obviously, but from, say, uh, you know, from Ireland to uh, Siberia, to the Ural Mountains. That's where the birch trees grow. That's where we belong. I think that's our homeland, our, meaning our habitat, you know, like geog uh, geologic, what do you call it? Ecologically speaking, our habitat is where the birth birch trees grow, you know. No. My camera is fine now. Maybe TikTok is making a problem out of it. But anyway, uh, let's see. Birch trees. 
See, my, my camera is fine. It's not, you have, it's a, it's a stream problem. Some people may have a, a lag or something. See, then, right. Yeah, they're trolling, yeah. I figured, birch trees, yeah. You know those white trees with green leaves? Yeah. That's where we belong in that territory. And that's basically Northwest Eurasia, you know, where you have these massive woodlands still, like in Finland and Sweden and uh, Northwestern Russia, you have all these uh, uh, beautiful places where, where we could move. If we had to move, we could start over there. I've been, I made a whole video about that called strategic relocation. We could, we could relocate in case, you know, the cities blow up in Europe or something bad happens, we would be able to go there, you know, Bronze Age, Bap, Bronze Age pervert. Yeah, he's a Jew. He admitted to that, so I wouldn't believe a word of what he's saying. No. It needs to end. The war needs to end. People call me a Russian spy because I said I want the war to end to save our men. How crazy is that, you know? Well, this is my English channel, so here I will speak uh, English. Also, my Dutch people, my own people, they're very abusive. I get most, most insults I get on my videos come from my own Dutch people. So I don't like them there that much anymore. I do like the international crowd. They're much nicer, you know. I'm Dutch. You know? Happy Easter, happy Easter, yeah. Oxymoronic. <laughs> Guten Tag. Someone says Shalom, I say Guten Tag, you know? <laughs> oh, you're also Dutch, okay. No, I'm not rich. I live uh, as cheaply as I can. I don't spend money on, on much at all. I sometimes go swimming for uh, five euros or something, but you know, I don't buy expensive stuff at all. It's like 10 euro, 10 euro sweater discount. And I like it. See, that's who I am. I love this stuff. I don't, I don't need expensive shit. I buy cheap stuff. Why do you say communist? What does that mean? Full sentences, please. All right. I don't like the Netherlands anymore. It's too overcrowded. Too many people on, on too small places. Like in the Netherlands, if you want to go to a forest where it's quiet, well, good luck with you. You know, there's a highway through every forest. It's just, I can't stand things like that. I don't like that. You have to travel very far in the Netherlands to uh, have some peace and fucking quiet, you know? Orania, I like, I like those places, yeah. But we need more than one. We need thousands of them, thousands of new communities wherever we can build them, like the Mennonites did or the Amish. That's what we need to do, I think, you know. <clears throat> Millions are. Uh, I call it an empire of ethno states. Imagine a thousand little ethno states working together in a dish. This is very important. It has to be decentralized. So it's going to be a bit difficult on there. Yeah? All right, there's a yeah, Russia has the same migrant problems. Yeah, because they're killing their men and so they need to replace them with Asians, you know? This is really weird, you know? The Netherlands is overcrowded with people. We have 18 million people in a territory that is supposed to be inhabited by no more than 5 million people. We have way too many people. Putting these towers everywhere is disgusting, you know? That's why I oppose mass immigration. We don't need more people. We need, we need to send at least 10 million people out of the Netherlands, away, go away, go live somewhere, you know, where there's more room. It's not right. Because they're, they're just trying to turn the Netherlands into one giant city like New York City, right? With full of towers everywhere. It's horrible. I don't want people to live in towers. People should live with their, when they, when you open your front door, there should be soil there. You can put, stick your feet into the mud right in front of your door. That's how people should live not on the 20th floor in some shit apartment, you know? See, a lot of Dutch people are coming in and they just come to insult, you know? They're just mentally ill. I really don't like Dutch people anymore.
They're sick. I think Dutch people are like, Dutch normie civilians are like children, but with, with a retardation. Uh, I, 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 taught, I taught myself English as a child by watching DJ the Cat and Linda the Mall. Yeah. DJ the Cat Show, Sky Channel. So I, I was able to speak English by the time I was uh, 10 years old. And because I speak it so much, you know, through the live show, that's how you, you lose your accent. This is just how it is. The more you speak a language, the, the quicker you will lose your accent. So it becomes uh, easier to do that. <clears throat> Persians are not Arabs. Yeah, I know that, yeah. <clears throat> are the Dutch brainwashed by propaganda? Definitely, yeah. But it actually, the Dutch people, why are they there? Why do they live in the Netherlands, in a country that is so manipulative? The media are so extremely manipulative. Why is that? Because they were always like that. Right? It just ha you have to be that kind of people in order to live there. You have to be um, gullible. People get so angry when I show them <clears throat> truths, about, truths about certain things in our country. It, make, it drives them mad. You know? Hey, I've got 60 viewers live now. You know, when I started, I only had three people and someone came to laugh at me. Oh, you only have three people. Now I have 60, see? I didn't even do anything for it. Oh, <clears throat> sorry. I've been talking just for 36 minutes and then it gets back to 60. This is interesting because I thought I'd lost my accounts, right? I was banned and I thought, oh no, and now it's going to take me ages to get uh, traction again. But no, I get the same number of, that's, the, that's so fun about, uh, that's so great about TikTok. You lose your account, you come back, and you get 10,000 views on your videos and 100 live, live viewers, you know? Nah. <laughs> Dude, I've lost like 10 accounts on TikTok and I keep coming back and it doesn't matter because I keep getting traction, you know? Do you support the Europeans urbanize Africa to live there without invading lots of room? I think Europeans should invest in urbanizing Central Africa so that their people can live there. Because now they're coming to Europe, what for? We should move, I don't care about wealth. We should move some of the European wealth to Africa, Central Africa, so that they can live there. I'm just against migration. I don't want you to be poor. No, here drill this is, uh, <clears throat> he supports Israel, right? Uh, Neuralink, I will never have Neuralink, you know. All right. Someone's projecting their love problems. <laughs> what do you think of the, no. Good bread and cheese, right? Good von Berlichen vibes needed in the... Oh, I think I know who you mean, yeah. Berlichen, good von Berlichen. Hold on. So why important? Do you like live in a cold country? I prefer cold country, yes. With the summer, cold country, but with the summer. So that in the summer you have your, uh, your light is in. Yeah, daylight saving time. Yeah, it's all everywhere in Europe, yeah. Any crusader? Yeah, there's a crusader book called uh, uh, God's Battalions by Rodney Stark. Can I type that in? I don't know how to comment here. Oh, here, I can write a comment. <clears throat> the book by Rodney Stark. Look it up, it's so good. Oh, <laughs> I'm not allowed to write the word Rodney Stark. What kind of nonsense is that? Wow, TikTok censorship sometimes is so, here, this book. Can I say that? I can say that. I'm not allowed to say Rodney Stark in the comment section. Oh, bullshit, you know? I don't need to tell you anything, you know? I'm a public person here and people are coming after me anyway, so I don't need to tell you anything. I deserve some privacy. You know, there's a video called The Crusades Were Awesome, actually. Pretty basic stuff, very more formative, yeah. 
Rodney Stark. Uh, who is this weirdo? Get lost. Get lost. Yeah, Rodney Stark is, uh, yeah, he's pro Crusades, basically. He explains how the Crusaders were not fighting for uh, money or capitalism, they were fighting for God. And so, you know, he explains how, how they were just, you know, good men trying to defend Europe. Yeah, I've tried Gab's AI, yeah, it's okay. Finland, Norway, Sweden. There's a lot of places there where you can go, yeah. Why are Eastern Europe... Well, why the Eastern European medical system works better than the Western? I have no idea why. The Crusades were basically a response to a thousand years of Islamic invasions. They eventually wanted to clear the pilgrimage path because Christians used to go on a pilgrimage to Jerusalem and they were being robbed and raped on the way there. And that's why the Crusades started. You know, I think most people don't even understand what Crusades were about. They were about safe passage to Jerusalem for your pilgrimage. And why shouldn't they have the right to visit Jerusalem? You know, it's a bit weird that you think that we couldn't do that. See, people are so misinformed about European history. And I keep talking about it, but... I don't think it will help. We need to simply start writing new history, you know? Why should the black people survive? What's so special about black people? You know, the original purpose of the Crusades were justified, but what happened during them, not really. They were attacked by Muslims, so why shouldn't they fight them? You know, it doesn't, mean, it doesn't make any sense to me. You should read the book by Rodney Stark called God's Battalions, you know, clear, clear your mind about this. Albinos are, are still Africans, see? You have albino white people and you have albino black people, but they're still racially different people of course you know it's a bit weird you know here's one of those weirdos i'm so sick of this you know all right this was just my uh, first live since i was banned it was enjoyable 45 minutes i'm going to do this more often again as usual but i also need to you know make sure that things are interesting for myself i'm, just, I'm not going to do this just for no reason right eric prince is an idiot and i think Africa should be urbanized. We should invest in uh, African cities so, they, so that their people can live there with the wealth that they want to have. I see no problem in that. But to colonize Africa, you're saying that Africans are too stupid to, what, run their own countries? You know, <clears throat> I prefer not having nothing to do with them. That's my whole point, you know. You know. Oh, you like my book, Revival of the West? Thank you very much, you know. You can go to my newsletter, jmk.info. Jmk see you there. See you next time, right?